understanding what the new regulations uh, dealing with feed use of antibiotics and how they will impact resistance. I will note that my both my email and my personal cell phone are on this first slide, and I, I feel very free to contact me in whatever method is handy. Uh, if you love agriculture, I'm willing to talk. Uh, if you don't, uh, please vote for somebody else. In December of this, in 2013, the FDA announced the Guide for the Industry 213, which became final in October of last year, in which in all labels that are uh, have been available must be changed not later than January the 1st, 2017. So the companies that were involved in the use of or production and uh, dis distribution of antibiotics have that cushion with which they can change those. <clears throat> the question is, so, so what does the, how, how does it impact the beef producer? Uh, and, and in my opinion, having been a veterinarian now for 40 years, and I look at the use of antibiotics, and I've exclusively worked with, with cattle in those 40 years, I think it offers more for beef, beef producers than it takes away. This particular very complicated looking table uh, comes from Guide for the Industry two, two, uh, 152, which uh, was part of, of a joint effort between the FDA, CDC, and the World Health Organization to look at all antibiotics in the world currently in use uh, by classification, drug classification, and determine which of those were critical to, uh, to humans, which were highly important, uh, and, and, and look at the potential for residue or for uh, antibiotic resistance to develop. In, in their discussions, they decided that if exposure, bacterial exposure to the antibiotic was short, less than seven days, they were less likely to develop resistance. And there was real serious concern if, if the exposure was longer than 21, especially in those critical use antibiotics. Uh, not all compounds uh, classified as an antibiotic are considered important to humans. Uh, I've added a short list of, of, of classifications uh, or antibiotics by classification that have absolutely no relationship to humans. About a third of all antibiotics used in the United States come from this short list of antibiotics not considered uh, important to humans. The length of time, as I mentioned, uh, for the critical, highly important, and important antibiotics was going to be the key focus of the new regulation. It, and that, that the use of those antibiotics could only be used for disease. Never again would they be allowable for uh, production purposes. And, and they would only be used if, if under veterinary supervision. Uh, so never again would they be available over the counter. In this guide for the industry, uh, 152, they drew a line in the sand and stopped all approval processes for feed use antibiotics and said that there would be no more approvals of any antibiotic for production, growth, uh, or reproduction uh, in, in the future. That only <clears throat> only use for disease treatment, disease prevention, and disease control would be allowed. The VFD, Veterinary Feed Directives, are not new. The first one, Guide for the Industry 150, uh, 120, actually dates back to the early, 1990, early 1990s. So and we've had uh, uh, all of this time an opportunity to learn how to work with the Veterinary Feed Directive. The very first one was, was uh, uh, approved for use in swine. It was a, a macrolid for the uh, use for the treatment, prevention, or control of pneumonia in pigs. During that time, uh, the distribution channels to learn how we could move drugs under a restricted environment uh, was well worked out such that the medications can be available without uh, a, a, a threatening animals, uh, animal health. 
on my half, why am I and others enthusiastically endorsing this Guide for the Industry 213? Well, the issue about the use of antibiotics for production in my lengthy 40-year uh, uh, career as a food animal veterinarian, we have never used those um, antibiotics for those, for those purposes. Uh, first of all, they are meagerly uh, effective, and, and, and we have, um, and they're expensive. One of, one of the, uh, the VFDs that are available, that, that have been made, available since this announcement, is, is far superior to any antibiotic we've ever had available in the feed to treat animals that are effective. It is very, very realistic that now that we have uh, tight controls and, uh, uh, of the use of these in the feed, that additional antibiotics may be approved in the future. So what are livestock raisers giving up? Uh, I took a really hard look at that for, for a couple of years. I was on the FDA Veterinary Advisory Committee, myself and others, looked very closely at the growth uh, promotion, the gain and efficiency labels and data, and there was nothing there. Uh, there was nothing um, in the antibiotic use uh, better than just good health, which almost always involves animal husbandry, and over the years, the, the uh, improvement in genetics far outweigh any of, uh, efficiency that was ever gained with the use of a feed additive uh, in, in, in livestock. So the majority of our observations uh, over the years have come from genetics, not drugs. <laughs> not as many labels as you might think will be affected. Now, I'm a beef person, so I will speak to the beef labels, but relative to beef raisers, there's only four antibiotics that are important to humans uh, that will be affected, and they are chlorotetracycline, neomycin, tylen, and, and oxytetracycline. Three of those are under the highly important classification, and, and one is a macrolid uh, that is in the critical. One of the most common antibiotics that producers, uh, livestock raisers across the United States have used for decades uh, is, is one known as AS700. And in everything about that label, that product's going to be gone. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll not see that drug on the market ever again, but it has never been effective at, at dealing with disease. So what will the new labels look like? This is an example of a label. In this, in this case, I have chlorotetracycline. I specifically use chlorotetracycline because the tetracyclines represent about 60% of all the antibiotics uh, fed to livestock in the United States. And as you can see in the first part of that label where it says calves, I have highlighted in, in a, 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 a gray tone, all of those indications will be gone. That product will never be fed to calves again at that rate. Underneath the growing part of that label, um, there, there was one area that said for improved feed efficiency. That will be gone forever. The part that talks about reduction of, of, of liver abscesses, liver abscesses is a real disease. Uh, it, but the wording will be changed for control. Uh, control of, of a disease uh, is accomplished when you know you have disease within a group and, and, and the antibiotic use is to lessen uh, that amount of disease in the herd. Another example, or perhaps a, a more common example, is anaplasmosis in, in beef cattle in the south. In some parts of Texas, uh, we have a 365-day threat of having a severe, uh, if not deadly, disease in, in livestock herds. Uh, and we know that all the herds in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, as you, Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, as you come north, we have anaplasmosis in all those herds. And if we and, and chlorotetracycline is very effective at, at stopping the, the movement of that in a herd and saving hundreds of cattle. 
Tetracycline, as I mentioned, is about 60% of all the antibiotics used in the feed. And it has been used uh, for not only disease, but for gain. All of that will be gone and never, ever again appear. The bottom line is there's going to be some paperwork. We're going to be tracking antibiotics, and there'll be those records will be kept uh, on file for a couple of years by the veterinarian, the producer, and the people who distribute it, perhaps the co-op. But we already have in the free enterprise system enterprising companies that have stepped forward to make uh, electronic movement of the data and the and, and the forms uh, seamless. Uh, we've already started that, and they work very effectively. <clears throat> if antibiotic resistance uh, decreases, I think everyone in agriculture will be really happy that we participated and did our part. If, in fact, there is no change, the world will at least know that the 2% of us involved in agriculture did our part as best we could. Um, it, it, I think it's important to think about antibiotic use, and if you look at size of animal, Dr. Dr. Apley in, in 2015, on a on a pound per pound basis, we, we actually use less antibiotics in, in in livestock, poultry than than, than humans. So it's it's not just agriculture's fault. <clears throat> Dealing with food animal disease, we may get a few new antibiotics now that we have tight controls around how the antibiotics are used, uh, for what they're used for, and, and, and to be able to trace where these antibiotics go. To me, it seems like a win-win. So as I look at it, changes on the horizon, and, and, and everything about it I see looks to me like a win-win. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or contact me by cell phone.